So, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ellen, if you're new. Today's video is me reflecting on living in Barcelona for one year. I can't believe how fast this year has gone by. If you don't know, I'm from the US, I'm from Minnesota, but I was living in Arizona for like three and a half years before I came here. Well, I had like a six month stint living at home with my parents right before I came here, but really I was like living on my own in Arizona for three and a half years before moving here. So it's been a year. I can't believe it. I literally have it like marked on my calendar and I was like, oh my God, like it's been a year. So I thought I would talk about it because my life completely like did a one, not, not even like a 180, like a 360, like it just flipped completely differently to what it was before when I was living in Arizona. So I just thought I would reflect on that a little bit, give some of my thoughts after living here for a year, like what's different about it, what my first impressions were, and like how I feel after being here for one whole year, which is just crazy. But yeah, let's just get into it. I don't really have thoughts drafted for this video, but I probably will include clips and things like that of things that I'm talking about and just like some memories. So like I mentioned, I had been living in Arizona before, so the reason why I moved to Barcelona was I wanted to live in a walkable city, and as I'm sure many of you probably know, the US doesn't have much of that, <laughs> unless you have a lot of money. So I wasn't really looking to live in New York, or maybe Chicago, or maybe San Francisco, so that's what led me to just deciding to move abroad. Uh, I'm very lucky, and I could kind of just make that decision because I really had like nothing holding me back. Um, so I know it's not that easy of a decision for most people, but I was kind of fed up with apartment searching in the US and not finding somewhere that I was really drawn to, to live that I could afford. And that had the weather that I wanted. So yeah, I guess when you think about it in the US, a lot of the walkable areas that we have are in cities that get like a pretty cold winter and I don't want more winter. <laughs> Um, so that was part of the reason why I moved to Arizona and then I figured out Arizona is one of the least walkable cities and I keep bringing up Arizona even though this is a one year living in Barcelona video because that was my life before coming here and that's kind of like what I have to reflect on as far as like when I say my life like flipped upside down like that's why. So I don't know if you've been following me for a while or if you just found me but I have made a lot of videos on my channel about like weight loss and living alone and, and I have a lot of videos up like about during my time living in Arizona so you can go back and watch those if you're curious. But since I was living there during COVID, I basically didn't socialize for like three years straight. I had not socialized a ton like and felt super confident and everything even when I moved there at first because it was my first time moving across the country and like fully living alone. So that was a pretty big change. So when people ask me like, oh, was it really scary moving to another country and like living alone? No, like moving to Barcelona really wasn't as scary for me, thankfully, because I already had the experience of moving to Arizona alone. So like that was kind of like the stepping stone to being able to move here. I don't think I would have been able to just moved to Barcelona right away without having tried something a bit more like in the middle for me. So that's why I mentioned so much of my living in uh, Arizona. But anyways, so I had, and still do, but I take COVID very seriously and I did during the height of the pandemic. So living in Arizona, I'm sure you can understand like the, <laughs> if you paid attention or if you were in Arizona at the time, like they did not believe in it or like put any precautions in place. So I lost trust for like, anyone i became super paranoid basically like agoraphobic yeah really was not thriving at all so basically my apartment just became like my little safe haven and i barely left until i got comfortable enough to start like walking outside and going on hikes but i like maybe went out to eat at like an outdoor like sitting restaurant like three or four times a year each year. And that was like the only time that I had socialized with people. And I like quarantined before and after because I like that's how much I like did not want to get COVID. So it affected my life a lot. I'm sure it affected everyone's life. I think we just like skip over it, but I don't know when I was like reflecting on my tick, I like went back in my TikToks and watched all my old TikToks. And like, I was just reflecting on life the past few years, not just this past year. And I was like, yeah, I mean my life now I'm so much happier, but like I was very, very sad and like didn't know if my life was ever gonna get that, you know, exciting again. So that's 
why I'm comparing it to a few years ago. But then kind of COVID kind of let up a little bit. And in 2022, like mid 2022, I had decided not to renew my lease in Arizona. And I decided like I would try to put plans in place to move to Barcelona, but I just didn't know how fast that could happen, especially with my US based job. There was like a lot of negotiating going on. So I moved home to Minnesota to live with my parents for a bit and figure out what my next step was going to be. And that was nice because I didn't have to have like a lease or anything that had like an end date that I had to like leave by. So, so thankfully I could live with my parents and just kind of like go from there. So I would love to say that living with my parents was really nice, but it was, it was not. Um, so that was also quite stressful. Yeah, that time was not fun. So then I finally got here and it's also very stressful moving to another country, but a lot of it is good stress. Like I've mentioned that in a few videos, like moving here is moving to another country or just moving period is stressful, but it's not always bad stress, like it's good stress. And so I went from being like completely antisocial, paranoid, agoraphobic, having terrible OCD, being in therapy every week for years and like extremely nervous to like even leave my apartment to moving to another country. Like, I don't even know how I just made that leap. I was just like, mm, screw it, like, let's go. Cause I just was kind of, I guess you could say it like a sort of a rock bottom in the US. I was like, okay, hey, like I'm extremely nervous and sad. So like, screw it, like, let's just try. And then I was like, if it sucks, I can come home like and live with my parents again. I had like that to fall back on. So, so that's kind of like why I felt comfortable enough to take the leap. Plus thankfully my parents were very supportive and they weren't like, no, don't move, don't move. Like, why would you do that? They were like, yeah, do, do whatever you want. Like, we'll help you how we can. Like looking stuff up or whatever, like just supporting me emotionally and stuff. So at least that was nice, but yeah. So it was a huge leap to take and compared to my life in Arizona and like comparing my life in Arizona to here, it, like I, it could not be more different. It's crazy. Not even just socially, but like my lifestyle is insanely different. And thankfully COVID has died down quite a bit. I don't know if I would have the same experience here. Well, I definitely wouldn't be having the same experience here if, if it was a couple of years ago. So I think a lot of it just has to do with the time uh, and being a few years post like peak of COVID. So yeah, I, I want to say like last year when I first got here, it was just very overwhelming. Like I say, it's not always in a bad way. Like it was just very overwhelming because I went from like basically no socialization, being nervous to even go to the grocery store, like pick up my mail to being in another country where there's millions of people in one city or like hundreds of thousands of people in one city walking everywhere all the time. The metro, the public transportation, the tourists, like it was a lot. Like literally jumping into the deep end of a pool. It was quite intense, but I think I kind of needed that. I don't know if this makes sense to you guys, but my therapist, cause when I told her I wanted to move to Spain, she was like, oh, cause we were talking about how I was like, I was crying to her that I couldn't even walk outside the door without feeling like I needed to take a shower because I felt contaminated from the hallway air. Like that's how bad it was. She was like, can you just try walking out the door for me quick? And I was like, what? And so when I told her that this was around the same time that I told her I wanted to move to Spain, understandably, she was like, oh, you do? Are you sure you can do that? <laughs> and I was like, I think so. And I don't know what it is, but for me, a lot of my OCD symptoms or like thoughts flare up in situations where, I don't know, I, I guess, I don't really know how to explain it. I just had a feeling that if I moved to Spain, I was like, I have a feeling a lot of my thoughts are circumstantial and I just don't like my situation right now. And I think it will be better once I'm there. And I don't know why I thought that. Maybe it was like a self-fulfilling prophecy because I thought that then I did it. I don't know, but something about being here, like, oh, I don't wanna cry, what the heck? That just came up now randomly. Some <sighs> something about moving here, I don't want to freaking cry. I know it's, I know what it is. It's a lot of things, but it is still a bit unexplainable. Like something about moving here just made me way less nervous. I also did start medication, but I did, I started Lexapro six months before I moved here. So it wasn't like, you know, like I had time for the Lexapro to like, like kick in before I got here. So it wasn't just because of Lexapro, but I think Lexapro in Spain, like, I don't want to say I'm cured because I'm definitely not cured of OCD, but it is like, 
80% better. Like I was in like the, the pits of OCD hell living back in Arizona and even in Minnesota. And it's like so much better, so much better, so much better living here. And I don't really know why. All I can think of is I started noticing things when I first got here that alleviated some of my thoughts. So I think part of what it is, like OCD is very shame based. And I don't know, I think it's like maybe part of US culture that people are very quietly judgy and there's like a keeping up with the Joneses aspect of everything, which there still definitely is everywhere. But like in the US, it, I don't know what it is. It feels like everyone's really paying attention to you and like waiting for you to fuck up or something. But here it's just like the monotony of like people everywhere. Like there's tourists from a bunch of countries, like there's people everywhere. And like you just kind of blend in with the sea of people and it, is weirdly comforting. I compare it to like living in an apartment building. Like I don't want to know or hang out with my neighbors, but it's weirdly comforting knowing that there's a bunch of neighbors around me and like we're all kind of like together in this building. Something about that. I don't know, like the comfort of society <laughs> or something. Um, because I remember when I first got here, like just simply observing people do like monotonous daily tasks that I would typically be terrified to do and watching them do it and they probably didn't even have a second thought. It was probably just subconscious like doing something that I would normally freak out about. Just watching them, like people go about their days doing things that I would normally freak out about. I was like, oh, other people do it too and they don't care. Okay, maybe I don't need to care. So that I can't explain it in such detail, but like I had that similar scenario happen so many times where I was like, oh, People don't really care. People don't really care. People don't really care. People don't really care. And that thought process happened so many times that it was like, I don't know, just oddly comforting to be around people and like no one cares or notices what you do. <laughs> so that was like a big theme of when I first moved here. And then obviously just like the walkability, being close to my friends, like within a 10 to 15 minute walk of all my friends' houses. I mean, that's like priceless. Like you can't deny that that's a huge reason of why I felt so much better as well. Yeah, just being in another culture, I think I, I feel I feel oddly more confident when I speak Spanish or or um, I think it's because it has to do with the, like words in another language don't hold as much weight as words in your native language. So me speaking about a an uncomfortable topic or like something that I would typically be nervous or scared to talk about in English. For some reason in Spanish, it doesn't like resonate in my brain as something that's scary because the words aren't like so attached to like my being. It's just like I'm repeating sounds. So it, the words in Spanish don't have so much like meaning to me. So when I'm saying them, it's just sounds like I'm reciting a script, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel so intense. So I think that's part of it as well is like being in another culture, speaking another language where things are just totally different and it doesn't have such like an intense feeling to me, which is good for me. Like I'm not saying it's like not intense in a bad way. Like for me, <laughs> anything that can have less intensity for me is usually a good thing because usually the things in my life are just generally like end up being too intense and stressing me out. Um, so I know this isn't really reflecting about Barcelona quite yet, but I really feel like you need that kind of like background to my mental state as to when I moved here, as to like why it's so important and special for me that I've been here for a year, because just like making that leap and coming here, especially in the mental state that I was in in the first place is like, ah, probably one of the best things I've ever done. The last year has absolutely flown by, like flown by. I'm sure if you've moved somewhere, if even if it's just another city, another state, like you adjusting to a new area, new friends, new people, new, new stores, new whatever, like it just is like a whirlwind that keeps going, which is not a bad thing. It's like fun and I think takes your mind off of things because you have new things to focus on. Like, you gotta learn stuff, you gotta do the bureaucracy government stuff, you have to find friends, you have to find restaurants to eat at, you have to find a grocery store to shop at. So there's always something to learn and something to do, which for me is good because when my brain is idle for too long like it was in Arizona, bad things happen. <laughs> so it's good for me to be busy in my mind. So when I first got here, I was like bewildered. I felt like I was in a fairy tale. I would love to know if you guys felt that way too. Like if you've been specifically to Barcelona or when you first moved abroad to another city, like I like, I studied abroad in Granada, but it was almost, it was nine years ago. Oh my gosh, nine years ago. Wow. What the heck? 
So yeah, I studied abroad in Granada nine years ago. I think nine years ago, I was like an, an infant. When I was like 20, I was like a literal infant at that point in my life. Like I, I can't believe I was brave enough to just be like, screw it, like let's go study abroad, wee -hee. And um, it was a great experience, but I was still so naive and like sheltered and like just, even though I was in Granada, like my scope of Spain was still just like Granada. You know what I mean? So being in Barcelona is very much different and like living here because I was with a host family. I was at school when I was in Granada. So I was just kind of like popping around to like school, home, school, home, and then like group activity home, maybe to a bar home. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't exploring on my own really because my schedule was completely decided for me. So I didn't have to like think at all. I just showed up and followed the schedule. <laughs> so it was easy, but here I, you know, everything is, from scratch, I had to make it all myself. Yeah, I would love to know how you felt when you moved to another city or like moved abroad or moved to Barcelona specifically. Because when I first got here, I was like, am I in a fairy tale? Like, am I, is this real life? Like, it just didn't feel real. I was like, I'm in a city where I can just walk wherever I want. I'm spoiled for choice. There's restaurants and bars everywhere. Like I will never have enough time to try them all. You know what I mean? It stresses me out. I have a, a map, a custom map with like 500 places to try. It's like, I haven't even made a dent in a year. And so I just was like, I can, you know, just walk to the beach. I can walk to the stores. I can walk to a million restaurants. I can walk to all my friends' houses. And the other thing that was a little scary for me was just trying public transportation because I had never really tried that in the US. So doing that here, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little scary, even though I did plenty of research beforehand. But I will say I still have a little bit of OCD or yeah, I do. It doesn't bother me so much. It's not as stressful. It's just like I cope with it and I don't, I, I take my time with uh, adjusting to life using public transportation. So I, you know, still use taxis, the metro, buses, but I, you know, I'm not so comfy where I'm just like grabbing a seat and snuggling in, you know what I mean? I still kind of just stand and try to keep my little bubble to myself, but it is really convenient. And now I lo love that I can use it every day and like go wherever I want in like five minutes without being stuck in traffic or having to walk. So like the two biggest surprises to me when I moved here was just feeling like, cause most people never get that feeling of like in the US, like when you go to college or university, like that feeling of living close with your friends and having like an actual like close knit community or tight knit community. Um, but then coming here again, I was like, oh my God, like I never thought that would be possible again. Like, oh my God. So that was like, I don't even know, like the feeling was just like, I was on cloud nine, it was crazy. And then just adjusting to living in another city, but not just another city, like a total different country. So I was just meeting friends, going out, like very busy. And the first three months, like it felt like so fast, but also in my frame of reference in my brain, it's still only been like six months since I moved here. Like the la like the first six months is like the biggest impact on me. And then the, the last previous six months up until now, I don't know, that went even so much faster that I'm like, whoa. <laughs> like I thought it was still December and now it's May. Where did the first half of 2024 go? Like I actually feel like I just time traveled, it's crazy. So I think because of certain like events that I've you know, gone through here, like my job searching last year, having to move last year, um, starting a new job this year and just making more friends and trying to like get more involved and do more social media and stuff. Like I have been definitely keeping myself busy, which is good. <laughs> um, but it's crazy how fast time goes by. Like I don't even, I, get, I know it's probably annoying to hear me say it, but it really, it really has flown by. I feel like it was literally just June last year and now it's almost June again. What the heck? So that's really like my main takeaways, I guess, from the year living here is like, I've just been very busy. It has been quite stressful to really feel like I'm settled in here. I think in my scenario, because I wasn't like 100% sure that I was gonna be able to live here until December, like December's when my US job like had a date that I was gonna be like, cut off. So because I knew that I would potentially be like having to move home in December if I didn't find a job here, I was like, ah, oh, do I live here? Like maybe it's just a long, you know, a long study abroad or whatever. 
but uh, thankfully I did get a job that allows me to stay here, so I do have that now. But um, that's why I kind of feel like the time maybe has flown by even faster for me because I didn't feel like settled and comfortable enough to like really relax and say like, okay, I live here now until December. So it took me a, like a good six months in the beginning to even like figure out if I was gonna be able to stay here for real. And then now the past six months, I'm like, okay, I started a new job. I'm onboarding the new job. I'm in a new apartment. Like I have to get my, my Nia and start paying taxes. Like just lots of things. So now it's all of a sudden been a year. And uh, people always ask me how long I plan on staying here, if I plan on living here for the rest of my life. I can say for sure, not the rest of my life. I love Barcelona, but I don't think I want to stay here forever. But I really can't say, like I have no idea. Thankfully, I don't think I have to leave this apartment like after a year. So I think I can extend my lease, which is super nice. I would love to extend it because I don't want to move anytime soon. So part of the reason I don't want to move back is also just because I don't want to move. Like moving is so annoying and stressful and I've done it twice in the last year and I just don't want to move anymore. So I don't know. I mean, a lot of it depends on like how much I feel happy here, which so far I feel happy. And if that changes, then I'll make another plan. Right now, I don't feel drawn to go back to the US anytime soon. I feel like I've tried so hard and put in so much work to be able to move here that I'm like, I gotta just coast for a while before I do any other big life changes. <laughs> So I'm very happy. I feel like literally just in the past like two months, I'm finally like coasting. Yeah, like it took me all this time of like last year was like just crazy job application time for like legit six months straight. And then moving, finding an apartment, signing for the apartment, starting my new job, onboarding my new job. And so now that I'm at my new job for like four months now, I feel finally like I can co like not coasting, but Finally, I don't feel the struggle of like not knowing what the heck I'm doing. So now I feel like, okay, finally I have like a bit of knowledge under my belt for my job. It's not as stressful anymore. I know what, what is expected of me every day. And then as far as like my apartment, I'm feeling very settled. I love this apartment. So I just, I'm like, okay, I feel like I can take a breath <laughs> and, and just enjoy living here. Now that it's summer again, like, yeah. So I'm just very happy. I can't believe it's been a year. I have no plans to change anything right now. If anything, I want to not change some things for a while just to really enjoy my current situation now that I'm here. I don't know. I really don't think I'm going to move back to the US anytime soon unless some sort of like opportunity or situation comes up that would need me to move there. But if anything, like maybe if I get sick of Barcelona, I'll move to another city in Spain or another city in Europe, probably because I have a European passport. So I'll probably be in the EU for the foreseeable future. Uh, but I just take it day by day because you, if you know me, I love to plan. But in this situation, like I have no idea. Like I could still be here in six months. I could still be here in five years or I could be moving to another country or another city like in a year from now. I have no idea. So I'm just taking it day by day. And I guess, I don't know if it really makes sense to throw videos over what I was just talking about, but I do kind of want to make a little montage of my time here so far. And if you guys have any questions about moving to Barcelona or just moving abroad in general and like how to do it, or if you just need help like preparing mentally and emotionally, I get it. So whatever you need help with, just let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and supporting and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Okay, I'm leaving again. It is 4.10. Um, this time I'm gonna go by Casa Mila, Casa Batio, and all that stuff over there on the other side. It took me a while to like set up the Brita filter. I ended up just eating cereal as like a lunch snack. I'm still probably gonna get food later, but I'm probably gonna get takeout to bring home. Uh, but we'll see. So let's go.
been quite the journey, but I'm up here at the castle. Um, reworked my day a little bit because I woke up late. I wanted to sleep it anyway. I was like just exhausted from the week. Um, and the only ticket I had that was associated with a specific time was Castel de Montjuic, and it was for 1.30 p.m. I was like, okay, if I leave my house at like 12.30, I should be able to get there around like 1.30. That should be fine. Um, but I didn't leave my house till one. And then I was like, okay, well, I think my best way of getting there is probably the metro, which I've, I haven't been on a metro in like 10 years, nine or 10 years. Um, so I was like, ah, uh, to do this on my own, like, I just was like nervous, but I figured it out eventually. It took like a little longer than I would have hoped, but it's fine. Um, I went down to Passage de Gracia to enter and then I went on the metro and I thought I was all good. Like the bus or the metro came. I got on and then it started going the wrong way because I didn't realize, I, I was like assuming I was on the correct side so I didn't even think to check. Um, that was dumb on my part but it was my first time, whatever. And I was gonna start with the Museo uh, of Art of Catalonia but, oh sorry if the wind is like really bad, but um, I didn't have time because by that point it was like already two. So it was already like a half hour late for my ticket anyways. I don't think it mattered though, because when I checked in, she didn't care, but that's fine. I'm just glad that I'm here. Okay, I went to the castle, it was very cool. And now I'm just kind of like exploring the trails around it. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep walking around and enjoying the scenery a bit. And uh, I'll let you know where I end up. Right now I'm walking around Jardins Mosen Costa Ibera. It's literally so gorgeous. It's just, it probably won't even come across in video that well, but it's just stunning. Okay, it is 7.18 on Sunday night. It's been just kind of boring and rainy all day. I was really hoping to go out and at least do something today because it's my last official day of vacation before I have to work tomorrow. All right, I rearranged the room a little. The desk was over there. I moved it so that I would be facing the light for video calls and I am exhausted. I just slept in as late as I possibly could. Okay, well, I took the train to Sitges. I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Sitges as well. I know I'm here, so I'm not gonna say no to that. <laughs> at the beach. So I'm just gonna enjoy myself a little and I'll update you guys later.
catamaran for five hours this morning. We knew it was gonna be a lot of people. It was a lot of people, like probably a hundred from what I could kind of like estimate or count. We knew that was gonna be the case beforehand. There just isn't any like smaller options. It's either that or a private boat. We took off from Alcudia, the port of Alcudia, and that was where our catamaran took us from. And then we're going to dinner in Port de Palenza, I think, but we'll see how it goes at the bars and the restaurants and whatever we find. her home or her apartment for Halloween. There's spider webs all over the walls. There's black lights. There's glow in the dark ping pong balls. Balloons everywhere. The cool lights. We're gonna set this all up for food. Like there's even more. It's so sick. Happy Halloween. going this way are not turning out that amazing um, but we're gonna go down and get better pictures in a second I think so so far so good present for like two weeks because well honestly I didn't need to work that hard on it but I was excited for this like little project that we decided to do um so my friend Naomi is from the Netherlands but it's like they do Secret Santa as well but they like take it up a notch and they make the gift like the wrapping of the gift look like something that either has to do with the gift or the person or 
yeah so it's like kind of a craft and a gift and then you also write them a poem that is where i'm about to head out to and let me show you the present so this is gonna be for my friend sari and she's from florida so i was like i don't really think like the gift i'm giving her is gonna like translate into a craft very well so i was like let me just do it you know florida themed instead so yeah i made all these other animals i'm actually very proud of this like i don't remember the last time i made a craft but i got like glue sticks liquid glue hot glue gun yeah i'm about to head over there and i'll show you guys the other presents okay i just got home this is the gift christina made for me and it's so cute so it has all the little buttons on top and then this is the best part freaking cute is that? Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. That's so cute. I'm ready for the slow. I've got my little GoPro clip. Okay, we went on one blue run that was really hard for First time in 10 years, I fell probably five times. And we're gonna go to the bunny hill, so yay. 